Hello there, I'm Balsamic Vin, and today we'll be reviewing the Transformers Kingdom Commander Class Rodimus Prime. This is Hasbro and Takara's take on a G1 Rodimus Prime from Transformers the Movie in 1986. Still couldn't escape studio series, could we? I know that this is a little odd for this channel, but today we are actually going to start in alt mode. That is the mode he comes packaged in, after all. So, here we have Rodimus in his Cybertronian car mode, and it looks great. I really like the way the colors look on this guy. Add in the dark blue tinted windshield and the large yellow spoiler that even has a little orange in the middle, and this guy pop just pops. The only real kibble is the feet at the back, but I really don't care. They blend in well enough anyway. This mode holds together very well. It rolls. I know I have to spoil the accessory segment here, but there is weapon storage. The rifle collapses and plugs into the top via 5mm peg and port, and the Sword of Primus tabs into the bottom. Size-wise, he is a big-ass car, towering over the other cars and matches the size of Prime. However, you and I both know why that is. Of course, that brings us to the trailer. We will talk about features later, so let's complete the alt mode. And here we have the Space Winnebago mode. I like that name. This mode looks great. I really like the silver pipes along those beautiful, clean flame decals. The painting on the roof is very clean. The overall shape of the trailer looks great as well. I do agree with others that the car does stick out a bit too much. However, to be honest, I kind of like the look of it. I really don't know why, but I do. Rodimus holds in very securely and the whole thing does roll quite well. Size-wise, this Space Winnebago is massive, though I do think he's as big as he should be. For the most part, of course. I'm not sure if he should be bigger than Optimus. With the alt mode out of the way, I say it's a prime time to transform this guy.
here we have Rodimus Prime in his robot mode. Rodimus looks amazing. Again, the painting on this figure is very clean and precise. The muted red brought out by the black and vibrant orange, complemented by the larger, well-proportioned yellow spoiler, really gives this guy a sense of maturity compared to the 86 Hot Rod. I especially like the flames on his chest, with that black outline which really makes them stand out. The pipes along the arms are painted a very nice silver. I really like the look and shape of them. Add in all of that molded detail and this guy makes an amazing display piece. He is very clean thanks to a noticeable absence of kibble. He does have a backpack, but that is supposed to be there. Even then, it's not very big at all. The head sculpt is really nice. I know not everyone is a big fan of it, but I really like it. The colors and especially the eyes look great, especially when put beside Hot Rod. It does a good job of making Rodimus look older. I also find it funny that the head crest section was the helmet part painted on Hot Rod, but for Rodimus it's the exact opposite with the general helmet being painted and the crest left unpainted. Now for the big question, how does he feel? Great! Under the shake test, he holds up like a brick. The quality of the plastic also feels very good. He's held up very well over these past few weeks, and that's after plenty of transformations. Long story short, this guy ain't breaking on you. The paint is also very durable, but that is usually the case with official figures. Posability wise, Rodimus here is great. He has everything he should have and more. The extras include butterfly joints, double jointed elbows and knees, articulated hands including a separate first finger, inward movement on the wrists, and finally up and down movement on the ankles. As you can see, this guy is very posable. Accessory wise, Rodimus comes with a lot of stuff. Firstly, his rifle, which just plugs in via 5mm peg port. The Sword of Primus uses the same connection, but clips into his hand rather than plugs in. Both of these can be stored on his back using the 5mm port. Additionally, you can open up his chest and reveal the matrix inside, which he can hold, but it takes some fiddling in order to do. That is made even harder when you pull out this included effect part which just plugs them around the matrix, and now you have even less clearance to fit his fingers in. But it's all worth it because it looks badass. Speaking of effect parts, Rodimus also comes with this giant one that splits apart into five different pieces. Not only that, but you get two extra tip pieces. These each have 5mm pegs with molded 3mm ports, so you can either find a 5mm port or 3mm peg to plug these onto. Confusing? I know. Word of warning if you don't know this already, but these really soft plastic effect parts actually remove paint, so make sure to remove them every now and then before they grab on. I usually remove them in the morning and evening. That usually prevents them from sticking on. Of course, that's only if the surface is painted. If it isn't, then I just leave them. I can't speak for the harder plastic ones because they are new to me, so we'll have to wait and see what they do. Speaking of hard plastic effect parts, we also have one more set, which are these black smoke or flame pieces. You choose what you think they are. These are hard plastic and painted black, so I guess they shouldn't remove paint? In theory, at least. I would still be careful with them. He also comes with a Kingdom Collector's card, which for me was Dinobot. Peel the sticker and we have Dynamus, or the Herald of Unicron future. Lastly, we have the trailer, which can be opened up to reveal an interior. Surprised? I know. The interior is quite highly detailed with plenty of ports to plug his stuff into. That's not it for storage though. 
He also has this compartment at the front and a tray at the bottom similar to MP44. The tray is molded with pieces to store the matrix effect part and the black smoke flames. There is still room left over if you want to store anything else. The interior is actually large enough to hold the Luxes, and not only that, but there is an included turret that just plugs into this port. Now Rodimus has a battle platform. The turret has this really nice layer of silver on the barrels. There are two handles that are 5mm pegs to plug his hands into. The turret itself even has articulation with, with a swivel and hinge joint at the top and a ratchet hinge at the bottom. The turret can also fold up into the trailer and be stored inside. There's a little slot on the back that you need to tap the turret into in order to lock it in place. Additionally, the bottom has a 5mm peg to flip out, and the arm has a sort of stability stand as well to help with storing the turret. I also really like the little hydraulic door at the back. About after half a page of script, we have finished covering the trailer. Size-wise, Rodimus is standard Voyager size. He scales really well next to other modern official figures and even has what I think to be the right height around Optimus. Prime is slightly taller at the head, or more like shoulders, but Rodimus has, has certain larger features, like his hands. There's a port in his ass for a stand. Overall, Rodimus here is a very good figure. He looks great, feels great, and even has a large amount of accessories. This figure is guaranteed to look great amongst any modern official G1 collection. But before we show the final verdict, it's about time I address the elephant in the room. The price. In case you didn't know, this figure costs around $120 here in Canada, which is a hefty price to pay. In the US, it is around $80. So, is this figure really worth the price? I think that this figure is worth the price. Yes, Rodimus here may not be that big compared to the other two commanders we have gotten, but that is not where the money is going. In this case, we are paying for the engineering, the parts count. When you look at the transformation, it is very easy to see why this figure costs so much. All of the little tricks combined with the highly detailed trailer, that script took half a page, and abundance of accessories shows why this figure costs so much. Add in one of the cleanest paint jobs I've ever seen on a mainline figure, and you have possibly the best commander class. All right.